so let's just get connecting up so we want to bring in our our first little daisy chain elements okay so we've got this connected here the first one we're going to do is another thing we could probably compound up and and publish and that is to we're going to scatter some points within the letters and those points are going to act as our start points for the balloons to kind of start right so if i just start typing in here and scatter in volume is what we want okay now there is a but if you're on the latest version of bifrost if you go to windows bifrost browser and then go down to scatter pack we can see that there is a scatter in volume there yeah so you'll be able to get that node from there as well so we're going to scatter into the volume obviously our first volume is the letter b so i'm just going to drag that in from the outliner the mesh the b mesh there and i'm going to plug that into the scattering volume now everything is going to go this color because we've got the p um, switched on which basically means that we can sort of see what's going on in there without having to have it plugged into an output so i'm going to change this to blue noise so we get a more like standard amount of scattering and i'm going to bring this number down to about 40 maybe 35 something like that and at the moment we can see those points are indeed outside of our mesh so the first thing i'm going to do actually is get the point size down so i'm just going to eyeball this get a point size down and the reason these are outside of the mesh is because it's working on a volume and that volume's initial settings aren't very high so we can actually use an offset instead of changing the volume size because that will slow down our simulation a little bit we can use the offset so if we use the offset if i drag this in those points are now inside if i drag them out we can have them right outside okay so we'll drag them in so they're right inside there and we may need to adjust this a little bit later but that kind of looks good just checking that all the points are in there so we've got those points we don't really need to see those anymore and now we're going to instance our ball geometry that I was talking about earlier. So I'm just going to type in instance because we need a mesh. So let's use the create instances node. And I'll plug the points into there. And then we'll get our ball, which as I said earlier, is literally just a cube that's been smoothed twice, I think, maybe three times. And I'm going to plug that into instance geometry. Okay. Now, if we just put an output here now, we could just see those instances show up. Give it a second to think about it. And I can't actually see those instances. Well, let's just bake the geometry because that's the next Thing to do bake instance geometry plug that into there kill that and plug our mesh into there and there we go see the instances so i just needed to bake this down so we weren't you know plugging a, a big array into the output now we've got a merged mesh going on we need to do this anyway but um yeah so we can see our little instance spheres going on there i'll just get rid of this output and so this is almost it just for this little setup here so we've got a scattering of volume we're creating instances of this ball shape important to note that, that ball needs to be in the center of world space there's our one there um, and obviously if you scale that ball up then your instances will scale up as well if you need them bigger in the first place so let's just switch that off so now everything's baked down, we'll take those merged meshes and plug them into the balloon source, the NPM source. We'll just have a quick look in the NPM solver settings. I always just tick these on by default, label point ID and label sources in case I want to separate everything out at the end, uh, which I do, but in a different way. We'll get to that. I'll have disc uh, detect discontinuity off. This can be really good for certain things if you need like, like some 
extra tiny little voxels to help out to collisions and stuff like that. More, of, more often than not though, it actually can slow the simulation down by quite a lot. So if you don't need it, don't use it. I'm gonna untick use mess resolution because we're gonna be using the detail size for that. And I believe that's it for now in there. Okay, so that is our first line of elements for the letter B. And so what I'll do is I'll just create a backdrop for that and I'll just name that B. So it makes sense to do this just because you know, in a little while we're just gonna be replicating everything. So it makes sense to get all the settings right in you know one shape and we may have to adjust slightly for each shape just because you know they are different shapes and they will have different amounts of points within them but if we put a little backdrop around it it keeps everything neat and tidy and you know it's, uh, it's just better to look at we're going to talk about target volume ratio here so we need obviously ticked on preserve interior volume and that's what's going to almost inflate our objects that are inside this letter but cranking this up to the sort of numbers that we want to crank it up to straight away it doesn't seem to be the way to do it we kind of want to animate it over time because we want to see it blowing up rather than boom it's just there right so we are going to get the input because this is the input back into Maya. So I'll just delete what's on there. And I'm gonna open up the cloth properties and in here, this target volume, I'm gonna bring into the input of the input. And so we can now go into Maya and select the Bifrost shape and we can see we've got this target volume ratio going on here, which starts at one, which is fine. And I'm just gonna rewind, and I'm gonna hit a keyframe there. Then I'm gonna come to about frame 30, and I'm gonna take this up to about 200, and keyframe it. So we go from frame one up to frame 30, and then we are keyframing this to go up to a value of 200 over time. So it's gonna blow up, if that makes sense. Hopefully, anyway. <laughs> right, so that's that said, uh, sorted. So we'll just now plug in our grand, uh, cloth mesh, sorry, into the output. And we will see if this works when we rewind and play. And we may wanna start at zero, but we'll just see how we get on. And I'm just gonna turn off that layer for a second, just hit play. So first things first, I can see that gravity is really affecting everything. And so I'm actually gonna switch gravity off. Yep. And that's gonna keep them in place. So we'll press play again. And we can start to see them blowing up. Now, if we get any kind of like interconnection issues, like collision issues or that I don't know if you saw that, but there was a little pulse there. We are working at like a really low resolution. So sort of a 0.15 is quite low. And we to higher that, to higher that resolution, we want to take this down. We'll take it down slowly. I'll start at 0.09. And things will slow down a little bit, but we should sort of, you know, see a difference in how everything behaves. We'll just get some more detail going on. And we can see they're blowing up, they're pushing up against each other. And so what we're really looking for for them to do is to kind of create shapes between themselves where they're pushing against each other. So if they're not doing that, you want to really increase the, the amount by which we're kind of blowing these balloons up. So we could get the animation, the graph editor open and select the, select the Bifrost graph and then bring in this. So I think for me, I'm gonna make everything linear in here. It just helps me, uh, helps me see what's going on a little bit better. So we're at 200, I might take this up to 240, around that sort of weight. Rewind and play, just see if we can get them to puff up some more. So we're getting there, that's cool. If you go too far, it will start to look kind of odd. But yeah, that looks kind of cool, I like that. And 
what I'd like to do is keep them moving within the sim. Got a funny little issue going on here. But sometimes if you've got like a little issue like that, you could go back to the scattering volume and just put this down to like 34 so that they kind of re realign, sort of you know, move within that volume a little bit just to kind of sort out the problematic one. And there we go, that one looks cool. We could probably take it up some more, but I mean, you know, this is great. This is this is perfectly fine. And um, we're going to be taking the resolution down uh, in a little bit anyway. So that's the letter B kind of done really. And the next things we'll be doing is like copying and pasting all of this and then offsetting the animation. So before we do all that, first thing I'm going to do is actually on the input that's coming into Maya for the animation, it just says target volume ratio. And we're going to be animating a few of these with seven for all of the letters. So it's probably best if we rename this port, and I'm just going to rename it B, so that when we actually select the Bifrost graph again and you know look within the parameters, we can see the B, we can see its animation data there. So it's going to be a lot easier for us to work like that. 